of what your running backs were able to do yeah. today. Uh, the line may be better, but yeah. still problems with the running backs ran really hard. Yeah. Wiggle, what did you like from that group? I, I really appreciate those guys, Paris and Kobe. Right, without having Mike, they know it's going to carry the load. We've been in a three-back rotation, and you know it's been really frustrating our inability to effectively run the football. You know, regardless of the opponent being FCS or whatever the case may be, it was big for our guys to come out here, establish a line of scrimmage, run through tackles, create some explosive plays, and just kind of rebuilding our confidence here going into the bye week to get some guys healthy. You know, across the board, it's been a physical first half of the season, and you know, natural nicks and bumps will get. Two weeks get guys healthy and put it all in the tank to go get a win at North Carolina. You mentioned run through tackles. I think it was Paris, but it was yeah. right early on, yep. kind of truck back yes. safety. Yep. Did that kind of set the tone a little bit? It, 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 it did. You know, and he's shown some, some of that early in the year. And we just told him, like, hey, man, you're going to get some opportunities today. Just make the best of it, right? You know, run with a passion, which he has done all year. And the O line did a good job covering some guys up. And, and we, you know, capitalized on those opportunities. In the O-line, there were some changes on the right side. Yep. Uganda moved inside. What's your initial impression? You know, um, I think uh, Uganda didn't show up, you know, initially without watching the tape. Uh, we're still going to look at and evaluate it. Like I said, we feel good about our left side. And then if we need whatever we need to tweak on the right side, I thought Jimmy showed flashes of some good stuff. You know, there was a couple sacks early in the game that derailed us, so we got to clean that up and just – you know, find ways to either with the tackle or helping the guys in situations. Um, because that's going be key, you know, when we get to the second half, right, of the season, you know, with with the right side of the O-line. The decision at the end of the first half, second straight week, you guys go to Malachi yeah. in that spot. Uh, what's your confidence level yeah. on that type of play and, and I guess the reasoning behind going to him? Yeah, I mean, again, just being aggressive, right? Again, we've been talking to our kids. We're trying to say, hey, we want to we be on the hunt, right? So we want to, you know, start fast, strain through the middle of a game, right, and then put the finishing exclamation point on the game. So we can't back off as coaches if we're saying that's what we're trying to instill as a mentality. So we had the opportunity right there before the half, you know, and Malachi, you know, to the boundary. They gave us the one-on-one -on -one opportunity, and Musket threw a great threw a great ball, and we capitalized right there. And then for, for, for Tony, to yeah. come back after the fumble and finish yeah. the first half. Yeah. Run, that, that was critical for him and for, for this team, right, because – um, it's those moments in previous weeks where something may not go our way and it kind of snowballs for, you know, plays, and then we kind of get it back. So at least we were able to recover, right? And then, again, for the guys to understand, like, game of football is like life, right? There's going to be adversity in it, but we got to shorten that length of adversity and just keep pushing and keep fighting, right? Our margin for error is small, and you know, we, we can't beat ourselves, but when we do it right, and we do it good, all 11 guys, we got a chance. You know, we got a chance. So I like it. Yep. Yep. Was that an effort that you want to put emphasis on going four on four down coming into this game? And yeah. Again, it goes back to, like, we tell our kids, man, to have a hunter's mentality. So as a coaching staff, doing the same. And um, we, we worked that, trying to protect Tony in that situation, right? With, so we rep Grady. You know, to be that guy's 215, 220 pounds, so should be able to create a load there. But so it's kind of dual, right? We want to, we know what's going to have a fourth and short situation. That was our plan to do that and use Grady in that situation. Have you guys decided, or are you trying to uh, redshirt Calandria at this point? You know, we're trying to protect in the best situations, right? We know he's still one play away, right? Obviously, you saw it out there today with Tony, and he, he's in a good spot to go play, but with the the way that it unfolded, right, we thought we had a timeout type deal where he could go back in, but he couldn't, but he was ready to go. So we didn't want to put Calandria in there in that situation. So that's why we went with Grady for that one play. Is Broster House a, um, a functional backup at this point, or if it was an extended period, would you have to go back to Calandria? we got to do what's best for the team and probably go with Calandria. Yeah. Question back here. Coach, always talk about the next fan up mentality. Yeah. What are some guys who stood out to you the most today? Well, you know, Jimmy Chris, obviously, being the next man up, right, out of, at right tackle, you know, stepping up in there. Um, you know, receiver-wise, you know, been pushing JR um, to come along, and he had a, he had a catch or two, I believe. Um, still got to get Jaden Gibson because, as you see, Malachi and Malik, right, they're going to make plays for us. People still giving us opportunities, right, but you got to think at some point they're going to try to take them away. And, you know, Sackett made a, a good catch for us, so the ball found him. But 
that third receiver still where we got to get going. And then, you know, Paris Jones, right, because he's been the guy that's been rotating with three guys, you know, as a senior guy back, and for him to have, you know, the production he had today, you know, kudos to him and kudos to the whole line those guys. So, you know, those guys there would be the next man up, yeah. Was it the run game today, or what exactly did you see that allowed this team to finally piece it all together? Yeah. All, all I think it was a com combination of the two, of the run and the pass game, because, you know, we, we were able to stay ahead of some chains, you know, run the ball on second down to get us in some third and mediums if we took a shot on first down. And then, you know, between Musket and uh, O-line and the receivers, we connected on some explosive plays. I mean, you know, uh, Malik had a couple big, big explosive plays. Malachi had a big explosive play. So just from the passing game, just the combination of it working together, we got to still eliminate these these turnovers that are killing us right now, right? Um, hurting us drastically because the fumble by Musket was another opportunity we believe that we're going to score. And obviously, the interception took points off the board down there. So um, just, you know, by we get healthy, clean up some stuff, and just keep pushing forward. Yeah, now going into by we, I mean, how, how much does this team? Yeah, the team, everybody, right? The whole organization, right? It's just been, you know, rough now, what, 10 months, you know, uh, without tasting the victory. And all that's going into, you know, the off season, last season, the summer, the start of this year, you know, three losses by on the last possession. You know, these kids have been, they're, we're all desperate for it. They're desperate for it. And, you know, it's rewarding for them to go out and earn this victory as a team, playing complimentary football. And now, you know, they can enjoy it for 24 hours, you know, get, get, get back going next week, give them some time off to get their bodies ready. But we got to, we know we still have things to clean up to go down and play North Carolina. Let's take our last two questions from Mike. And, um, and in terms of the offensive line, do you have a feel right now? Are they further along in terms of run or pass flop? Or are you still kind of trying to find maybe where they can hang No, I, I thought we saw some growth in it today um, from a run standpoint of just, line of scrimmage changing and then getting on the second level. That's why we had some explosive runs because we was able to get to the second level on guys to, to free to back up. You know, not a lot of uh, penetration into our backfield, um, causing some some uh, negative yardage plays. Uh, I think once Jimmy, without seeing the film, I think once he got settled in, he was better in the pass protections. I think early on is when we had a couple of those, those sacks. So when he got settled in, he was better. But, you know, we're still going to evaluate it. and. You know, if it's Uganda going back out or Jimmy staying at tackle or whoever, Charlie Passion, whoever, right? We just got to continue to find that right mix of five guys. Tony doesn't seem like a running quarterback per se. Yeah. But how much of this is ability to just pick his spots and, yeah. and make things happen when you need something to happen? You know, it's <coughs> it's a it's an added, you know, I guess weapon or just a piece of the offense if you have a quarterback that can extend plays. You know, it's nothing. You know, cute. Uh, design quarterback runs. It's all off extensions and moving the pocket and just keeping us ahead of the change. And that's a big point of emphasis, whether it's him or Calandria, like, hey, if we have to extend the play, just give us another down and keep us ahead of the change so we can function. And, and you know, he understands that. And he was smart with sliding and getting down, trying to protect himself. But get what we can and then just, just keep moving the football. All right, thanks.